Uh, hello everybody, welcome to the next episode of uh, Drugoskovs, uh, my uh, podcast about uh, Pathfinder 2nd edition. Uh, today we have the special go- uh, guest, known at one from US. Uh, he is well known uh, content creator for Pathfinder 2nd uh, edition, especially uh, in on YouTube and as well on Twitch. So I think the first, first what we do, we'll introduce uh, you to our audience because maybe n- uh, not everybody uh, know you from, from Poland. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Nonat. I run the YouTube channel Nonat Ones, where yeah, I make videos around typically Pathfinder Second Edition. Sometimes I'll touch D and D Fifth Edition, and occasionally a random system like Call of Cthulhu or something. Uh, I mainly make videos around the rules, explaining them, sort of talking about how they work, but sometimes I'll go out of my way and uh, make a comedy skit or something silly from time to time. Uh, I also have a gaming channel that I just started called No Nat Plays, where I'm playing through the Pathfinder Kingmaker video game, uh, and then you can also find me on Twitter. Okay, great. So introduction after us, and now I think we can go to uh, our main topic, so the... Uh, Talking about the TTRPG. So my first question to you will be how long you play and what was the first game you ever play? So what (laughs) bring you to this beautiful world of the imaginary games? (laughs) So I love telling this story because my first game was awful. (laughs) Uh, My first game, I was in high school, about 16, 17 years old. And my girlfriend at the time invited me over to her house to play a game of D&D with her and her friends. And I had never gotten the chance to play before. You know, I'd heard of it. I'd read about it. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, The problem is that the dungeon master for this session happened to have a crush on my girlfriend. (laughs) So he didn't like me. And he just made my character's life hell the entire session like enemies would only attack me things would always go horribly wrong for me and after like a two or three hour session i just went home like oh is that is that dungeons and dragons (laughs) like I, i i could tell he was targeting me so it wasn't exactly a great experience uh i'd say my first real like extended campaign experience was in college uh, where me and about eight of my friends got together. We played a D&D 3.5 edition campaign. Um, our GM was incredible. It was the most random out there campaign. The final boss was the Muffin Man. who We fought him on Dreary Lane. It was <laughs> incredible. Uh, but, yeah. You're like uh, like a lot of uh, a lot of fun, especially the, the 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 second part. So from what you tell the the most of the time, uh, you was uh, the player on the beginning. You know? At the beginning, yeah, I I ran as a GM a few little one shots here and there, but I didn't GM my own long length campaign uh, until after college. So, except of the of the D and D on the beginning, so I I suppose it was the third edition. Uh, how long it's take to f- for you to recognize that there are other systems, other uh, types of the game you can you can choose? Uh, pretty much right away. Like I said, the um, I believe the game I played in high school was fourth edition D and D. At the time, I didn't know a whole lot about it. But I also knew my dad told me when I was growing up how he played second edition D&D. So already by that time, I knew there were different editions. Uh, And then my girlfriend in college invited me to hang out with her and her friends where they were playing Pathfinder. So already at this point, I know about D&D fourth edition, D&D second edition, third edition and Pathfinder. And then D&D five was on its way. Uh, And then pretty soon after, I learned about things like Call of Cthulhu and Cyberpunk. So I've I've never really been a a single system like purists purist. I've sort of always enjoyed multiple different. Okay, and when was the the first uh, big game which you're uh, DMing? So that was actually also my first online campaign. This was about a year after I got out of college. It was me and three of my friends, and we all lived in different parts of the country. 
Uh, so we decided to just play online. It was all theater of the mind. We weren't playing uh, Foundry or Forge or Roll20 or anything like that. Uh, and it was actually a, a Beck Me game, the D&D Beck Me, which was sort of the competitor of a d and uh, And that is, to this day, my favorite campaign I've ever gotten to run. It ran for about seven months. We had some really memorable moments, a lot of fun characters in that one. Uh, and it was just the most pure role-playing game experience i've had up to up to date you know like especially because none of us were you know none of us were creators the the game had nothing to do with our jobs it also wasn't like a huge part of our life at that point so we were still almost new to the game still so we still had that wonder of of experiencing things we'd never really seen before Okay, and uh, what about uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, when you recognize that this system is, is for you? So interestingly enough, this is a fun fact sort of about my channel, uh, going into making Pathfinder 2 content, I didn't even know if I was going to fall in love with the system. I liked what I saw. I really liked everything I had seen. I had made a few characters, but I hadn't gotten a chance to act. By the, when I made my channel, I had not played Pathfinder 2 E yet. Um, it worked out that I ended up loving the system, but the reason I chose Pathfinder 2 E specifically was because at the beginning of you know 2020, uh, on YouTube, there was almost no content about the game. You know, you had a few creators who mentioned it, like Puffin Forest and Taking 20, but otherwise, there wasn't really anybody making regular content about Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So I thought, there, there's my opening. I've been, I had been thinking about making D&D content or some type of role-playing game content, but it's it's tough to find your your opening to get in. And I saw that that niche of content that wasn't being filled. So I, I jumped on it and it ended up working out real well. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the first thing which bring you to, uh, to Pathfinder was the, uh, the YouTube. So to create the content and you decide that, okay, here is the niche. So I will, I will f fill it up. Yeah. Yeah, technically, yeah. Technically, the first thing that really got me into the game was wanting to create content for it. Okay, and do you think there is still room for the content creation about the the Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Because right now, I think there are several different uh, channels. Uh, more and more uh, uh, people create the uh, recording the, their session. They play this uh, online i think we've in in the us even even more than than here in poland uh absolutely yeah i would say there is so much room for content creators around pathfinder uh, i will say that there are a lot of pathfinder 2e actual plays out there you know live plays playing through the different adventures i think what we need to see more of as a community is more people reviewing and getting creative with the system You know, there's room for people to cover the lore of the Pathfinder world. There's people, there's room for people to make, a, you know, go over build types, like how to make certain types of characters. Um, and as well as, you know, going over the classes and the, the base content of the game. Like, just because I've talked about and given my opinions on a class doesn't mean there isn't room for other people to say so. You know, I get people disagreeing with my thoughts in the comments all the time. So I know there's room for other people with different opinions to make those opinions heard and share that discussion throughout the community. Okay, so um, going next to the to the to the Pathfinder system itself, what mechanics or what elements of the of the of the system bio that you love this system so much that you create the content from the past two years, I think? Yeah, uh, I, I really hate sounding like a broken record because everybody says this, but it's the three action system. It just makes combat and encounters so much more intuitive and flexible. Being able to do anything you want in any order you want without the need of, you know, different types of actions. It makes everything feel a lot. It makes your, your turn feel unique and how you choose to do it versus just 
using each of your available actions once. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for for, for me, the uh, the best part of the pro of the of the system is maybe not the free action economy because for me it's the the second best thing. But the first one mm-hmm. is really uh, the uh, for. Um, or elements of the of the success so we have the critical fail mm-hmm. we have the failure we have the success and the critical success on almost all action and how the paizo create the uh, critical success and the critical uh, failure in this in this system so for me this is the the best thing in the uh, in the system because in most other uh, d20 system you have chance one twenty to got the critical success. Here is in completely different story. So, how you play, how you design your uh, design your character, how you design uh, the party itself. Because as well, this another thing which, which I, I I love in the system. So it's more to optimize the team than optimize the single build. Because in yes. PF one and uh, um, D and D free. 3.0, 3.5, and especially <laughs> in 5, you can create one genius uh, build yep. and you will end up uh, beating everything in the, uh, in, in, during the, 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 the session and the rest of the party can enjoy the, the role play or uh, slightly <laughs> help you. In this system, yeah. I even if you are power gamer you are creating min max character you cannot do this oh yeah the difference in power between a perfectly min maxed character and a flawed just i guess average character is not far at all maybe plus one or plus two higher on attack rolls you know yeah so uh next topic i think which we can uh, can discuss is what is your favorite class or ancestry in the in the Pathfinder? Oh, I am so boring, but I love fighters. I, it's funny because I always make fun of and insult the fighter for being <laughs> way too powerful, but it's so fun to critically hit, just rolling all of those dice, dealing like crazy damage at low levels. Like there's, I, I've played a, a shortbow fighter and shortbow has the deadly trait. So when you crit, you know, you're doing 2d6 plus 1d10 at level one. And it's just, oh, it feels great. Um, as, for, as for ancestry, I like, I like doing weird stuff. I've played humans a few times, um, but I'm, lately I, I'm loving gnomes. I want to play a rat folk. Uh, I'm currently playing a Kitsune Beastkin, which is super cool. So it's like half fox, half bird, which has been really, really fun. Um, so yeah, really just the, the more creative I can get with the, uh, the character ancestry, the better. Okay, and uh, in terms of, uh, of Pathfinder, there's anything in the system that, uh, that you have hard time to to understand some kind of mechan- mechanics that that create that your brain start to hurt uh nothing comes directly to mind as far as trying to understand uh, actually no crafting crafting is horrible <laughs> it, like base base rulebook crafting took me probably six months to fully understand because it's combined with the earn income activity and you use that as part of craft. It's so awkward. Uh, but apparently in the new book we're getting in February, we're getting revamped crafting rules. So I'm super excited about that in Treasure Vault. Uh, okay. And uh, what do you think about the uh, Adventure Path itself? Because um, I saw your material about the Adventure Path and I, I know that you don't really uh, like to play them and you, you put some, some thoughts there. And recently I create uh, the episode where I uh, recommend, especially for the new players, to don't start with the, with the adventure path, but start with the bounty or with the uh, mm-hmm. simple 
uh, adventure from the Pathfinder Society if they don't want to create own homebrew content, because I think that those adventures are uh, easier to play, less deadly, and can bring as well uh, uh, the same amount of the of the joy to the play. So this is your. I, abs- I absolutely agree. The scenarios and the bounties, and I think now they're called quests, or did they go from quests to bounties? Uh, either way, those are amazingly well written. They're just as high quality as the adventure paths. They're just made for one to three sessions. Uh, I've played quite a few of them. I've played the Lions of Catapesh. I've played, I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one where you go down into the sewers of the Puddles District. Uh, I've played uh, at least one or two more, but they're always fun. They're always cool. And in some ways, I like them more because they're more fast paced. You know, when you try to start up like a one to 20 adventure path, like I've tried to start up strength of thousands two or three times and it's fun, but it's a slow start. You know, they got to meet the teachers and they got to meet their classmates and they got to move into the school and then do some chores. And so you don't really get into the game for two or three sessions. Whereas, yeah, with these one shots, you're like, you're adventurers. This is your goal. Go do it. And it, it can really help players just jump into the world. <sighs> Yeah. Okay, so we agree on on those topics. And uh, uh, what is your favorite uh, part of the Golarian? Because I don't know how much uh, you know about the the lore. So maybe you have mm-hmm. some uh, favorite village, favorite uh, area, and so on. Because for me, I from the from the start when I I I, I read the the first few few pages, I love the uh, area on close to the uh, on the south of the of the Cortos, so it's Osirian. I really love Osirian, when, when yeah. yeah when I, when I see the this uh, I it's called Sokti, yeah, the, the 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 capital of the of the Osirian, and I I see that those images where you have the the Middle East. Uh, city and somewhere in the in the middle of this this city of giant holes of the of the ancient uh back so this bought me and uh, all my homebrew uh, adventures start to wear in in the in the <laughs> city of- <laughs> so i love so much of the inner sea region uh kadira will always hold a soft spot in my heart because that's where me and my friends first campaign ever took place we had a ton of fun there again playing with similar culture to the assyrian um you know we, there was a lot of genies and whatnot going on um and then i also love um oh, a cheliax cheliax is super cool just in, in its lore but i think if i have to have a favorite location uh it's gonna be the isle of dread where tar baffon is now it's almost unfair to say this but it's because of the way i slightly homebrewed it um, I ran a campaign on the Isle of Dread, um, where the island was almost like Geb in ways. There were sentient undead living on top of that island uh, that were not all directly evil in direct service of the Whispering Tyrant. So my players were stranded on this island. You know, it's surrounded by a permanent storm. They couldn't sail away, but they still met some NPCs they could trust throughout it in different undead settlements. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I think the Whispering Tyrant is just my favorite antagonist in uh, Galarian, in Pathfinder. Okay, and uh, what about the the book? Because we know that the, the Paizo create a lot of content. Do you have any mm-hmm. specific rule book or the, or the Lost Omens, which completely bio, it can be the, the visual inspiration, uh, side it can be by the the lore or by the mechanics which introduced to to, the game yeah uh, i think i have two books uh my first one my my favorite content driven book is the advanced players guide there's so much cool stuff in there uh the advanced players guide is like the core rule book too uh none of it feels out of place it all feels like it could have been in the core rule book Although it just would have been a massive book. Um, And, you know, it's got amazing spells, amazing ancestries, amazing classes, new stuff for everything that was already in the core rulebook. It's just a great read if you love the system. Uh, And then my favorite book for the artwork and the lore uh, has to be Impossible Lands. Impossible Lands is 
gorgeous. They they like Paizo somehow outdid themselves with that book in this past month. And I I adore Impossible Lands. It's one of the books I don't think I have a physical copy of, but I will be going to pick up. So in my opinion, uh, in my case, I uh, I don't have any physical copy because it's very expensive to to bring yeah. them across the uh, big lake which we have between the US and uh, and the Europe. Yeah. But maybe somewhere in the future we'll have something here on the. Uh, <clears throat> closer which brings the the prices down but from the pdfs which i have i think i most like the uh, book of the dead so when i saw this this rabbit the dead rabbit somewhere in the in the end of the, the this book so i i see them the scene from the monty python and the holy grail <laughs> the, this this spot me completely and as well i really like uh put undeads inside of my uh, my campaign uh, so as well there is a lot of uh flavor and a lot of uh new new monsters new hazard there and as well uh, i think especially that i'm a quite uh, harsh gm so on my session i have a lot of uh, characters going dead uh, because <laughs> I, I i'm harshless so when i when my monster can kill it it will go there there's no no mercy uh, so it's Give my players a your opportunity to don't lose the character if they want. <laughs> so Just become well, a skeleton. <laughs> for example, a, a skeleton it can be ghost, you can be a zombie, a ghoul, yeah. and and so on. And as well, the, the second thing which I, I love about this this book. So when I read about the uh, the fits which can uh, grab the the skeleton uh, ancestry, I see. Okay, I, I will be. I will be the uh, the alchemist skeleton, and I will uh, have my bombs on my ribs, and then the, uh, during the fight, I will grab inside of me and take the the bomb from my ribs and throw the, to the <laughs> my them enemies. All up inside. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, awesome. so, so those 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 three three things. Uh, I think is is bought bought me in in terms of the book of the dead. Uh, so going next, so you tell that you 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 play something way uh, back in the days in the in the online and how it looks like now in your cases. You play more uh, in real life in the table or more via uh, Discord or uh, Founder and so on. So unfortunately, I still play almost exclusively online, just because a lot of the people I know, especially now in the last two years, everyone I know is all over the world you know i don't know a lot of people who live close enough to commit to an in-person game uh but i will say uh i hate virtual tabletops <laughs> you know i've i've tried i hate roll 20 i don't really like foundry i that's gonna get me crucified i don't like foundry um i don't really like fantasy grounds it, it just it adds another layer of technical difficulties that really slows everything down. So pretty much all of my games are theater of the mind. And if we need a battle map, we use tabletop simulator. And that's just to import uh, an image and move pieces around. Uh, otherwise, if I need a battle map and then we aren't using tabletop, uh, I will use Owlbear Rodeo, which is a website I will swear by. <sighs> So it's similar to me because uh, I live in the middle of the Norway, Norway even in for the for the Polish standards. So uh, this makes uh, to to play in the real life very hard, and as well I have two kids, and this makes more difficult because if I even know somebody quite close to me, then I need to spend instead of three four hours playing five hours because i need to drive somewhere drive back yeah. and this will be very difficult so uh, as well since i think last three four years i play only online and mm -hmm. i love vtt especially the <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, 
I, I use Foundry, uh, I think right now it's more than a year and, and I love it. Now I'm, I'm creating the, the puzzle for, for the beginner box. Uh, it will be completely um, completely interactive by the, by the players. And when I finish this, probably I will uh, share this with everybody because it will be awesome. for the Foundry 10. So basically, if you don't know this puzzle, that the puzzle is uh, about finding the, the fake coin. So you have a pile mm -hmm. of the 10 coin and you need to put them on the hands of the of the statue. And if it's the real coin, it will be rise up. And it's, it's if it's a fake coin, then it will stay. So basically, I now using the, the module for the foundry to do exactly this. So if you put the real coin, the rise, the hand will rise. And if you put the fake coin, it will not rise. And then when you put the, this coin in the middle of the table where I, I create the, the basket, then you will got the, the information from the statue by the, uh, by the sound that you solve this puzzle. And here is your reward. And the door somewhere on the map will be open uh, with the sound and, and you will know that you solve this and here is your your award that's super cool and i i do want to clarify i don't think like foundry or fantasy grounds i don't think they're bad programs i just don't understand them. <laughs> yeah, so so so, so, so ba basically uh you you can use them but it's it's make your life harder because it's it's not the technology you you basically like it's a learning curve yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay anything more which you want to talk about maybe you have some uh, question to me uh you know this pops up every time i come on a podcast and i never have any prepared <laughs> I'm the worst podcast guest because they're always like, oh, do you want to ask any questions? And I'm like, uh, how, how was your lunch today? <laughs> yeah. So f for, for me, it was uh, quite good. Today we have the, the special things from, from Poland. Ooh. It's uh, we call this Russian dumplings, but it's, it's completely nothing uh, common with the, with the Russian. I don't know from the, from, from where this, this name is, is came from. It's really the dumpling, dumpling with the uh, cheese inside and the potato is much together. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Oh, so is it almost like a, like a pierogi? Yeah, it's, com yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, in, in Polish we uh, call this Ooh. pierogi. Oh, I love pierogies <laughs> so much. <laughs> oh, man. Now I, I haven't had them in years. All right, I know what I'm getting for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so I, I, I found these uh, notes which I create and send you. Uh, do you think about the um, audience outside of the US when you create your content? Always. Yeah. I try to make my content as universally enjoyable as possible, uh, which is difficult sometimes because there's a lot of different demographics to take in, uh, keep in mind because there's not just, you know, different uh, like, like foreign demographics, but there's also different levels of knowledge. You know, like when I'm making a video, I try my best to keep it engaging for a new player and an experienced player at the same time which is really hard sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my goal is usually to have uh, anybody from anywhere of any skill level open one of my videos and understand what I'm saying, at least enough to find it entertaining. And that's especially true of my comedy videos. You know, with my, with my Pathfinder and D&D &D comedy videos, I never want to pick a subject that requires prior knowledge. Like I want to, if I need to make a joke about a feat, it, like a specific feat, I might choose one that, that's really easy to understand at face value. You know, if I'm making fun of something called power attack, you don't need to know what power attack does. You can assume it's a powerful attack. <laughs> so it's, it's always weighing the importance of, of a joke or a piece of information versus how much the person watching would need to know to absorb what I'm saying. Uh, okay, and do you have any, do you check in the, in the YouTube or uh, anyone's area where you, where you share your content? Uh, what 
percentage of the your viewers are outside of the of the US. You check this? A really yeah, a really, really I can check right now live here. Uh, it's a pretty decent chunk. My audience, I know it's it's obviously majority US, just because yeah. I think that's how YouTube works. Uh but yeah, US is only 50%. Everything Ooh. else, um, yeah. Everything else is pretty um, pretty similar between Canada, UK, Germany, Brazil, um, Australia, Italy, Poland, Russia. All of those are between one and five percent. And after that, it gets a little bit a bit lower. But okay, yeah, so. US is only half. So over over fifty percent of the people watching my videos are from around the world, which is super cool to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So the last thing I think. Uh, okay. What we can talk about is: uh, Do you have any advice for any anybody who who listen to us? Uh, what advice you will give to uh, any uh, uh, anybody new who want to create the uh, channel on the YouTube or in on the Twitch around the TTRPG? Do you have any idea uh, how nowadays it will be useful? Yeah, um, so I have some some general advice, which uh, for, for YouTube and content creation as a whole is go in with one of two plans. Either do something completely new that no one's ever done before, or do something better. Uh, if, you, if you can't find a completely unique niche, like again, I got lucky with Pathfinder 2e, I was able to just kind of slide in there, but... If you can make better Pathfinder content than me or different Pathfinder content than is already on YouTube, do it. Like, like there is room for so much improvement over my garbage content. <laughs> <laughs> um, and beyond that, uh, the internet right now, it rewards consistency. It, whether you're uploading once a week, once every two weeks, three times a week, stick to a schedule. Stick to the same days at the same time. Uh, occasionally, Look at your metrics, you know, check out what time, like once you've built an audience, check out what time people are tending to watch your videos. You know, the reason I upload Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. is because my personal audience is most active on Monday and Wednesday between 1 and 5 p.m. Eastern. So there's a lot of metrics to it. But yeah, before you even get to the, to the metric side of things, just do it, be consistent, uh, and try to do something new or better okay and from my side if you want to start anything uh so it's it's really the the advice more technical than uh, about the the content because if you create any content then probably somebody will uh, will find this and will uh, love it so it's it's first you need to think about the audio because most of the our content is done by our voice so you need to be here clearly then you can think about the video and the last thing you need to worry about is or other things around this this video so some crazy stuff that going on on the on the screen or some some graphics and, mm -hmm. and so on and yeah. as well uh, do exactly the same thing which I do right now. So find some, someone uh, well known in the in the community about this and invite and do something with, with him. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Collaboration is key, I think, now more than ever. And it's something I've personally struggled with. So if you're out there and you're you're nervous about asking to collaborate, you're not alone. Like, it, it's so backwards in my head. Because whenever somebody reaches out to me, I'm like, Oh, that's so nice. Someone wants to like have me on their show or something. Absolutely. But whenever I think about reaching out to somebody else, I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to bother them. They wouldn't want to talk to me. And I talk myself out of it. And it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's it's more the, the personality stuff because uh, for me, it's completely opposite way. So I have <laughs> idea. Uh, okay, I, I will go ahead and ask. So the worst case, what, what can happen, they will tell no. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's and I, <laughs> not, nothing more. Uh, yeah, no, I have okay. the, 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 the same situation in, in my work. So I can go to the uh, director or the um, global director and, and talk with him completely normally with, without any hesitation. <laughs> because w w the worst thing what can happen that he will talk, okay, I don't have time for it. 
it's all yeah right they're they're not gonna they're not gonna try to cancel you they're not going to, hopefully they're not going to insult you for asking them and hey if they do insult you for asking them you can put them on blast on twitter <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so uh be brave ask anybody to uh to to create with with you and do what you what we all want and uh i think if anybody after hearing this will start doing something uh online i, I will be uh, more than than happy to to hear okay it's, it's because of you <laughs> Okay, I think it's uh, almost 40 minutes when we when we talk about RPG and and other stuff. So I think we can we can finish for for today. So right. if if you have any comments, uh, left them uh, below. Uh, see visit the uh, Nano Ch channel if you don't know, and if you know Polish, you can subscribe our our channel and and see our stuff. What we what we do do here. Unfortunately, for the live session, we it, it will be extremely difficult to create the the subtitles in English. So sorry for that. But if you want to learn Polish, be my guest and and hear our <laughs> session. <laughs> So no, thank you very much for uh, for uh, uh, taking the the invitation and for this uh, for this uh, discussion. It was very nice to to talk with you and probably yeah. we'll do something in the future. Hey, that'd be awesome! Thanks for having me on, Bardic. It was an absolute pleasure. Okay, so bye everybody. Bye.